guys, so I have a, a subscriber by the name of Bass Knuckles Kid. Um, he uh, asked if I could make uh, my um, Fathead Squishy Streamer in a an American Shad color. Honestly, where I live, I don't really use an American Shad color, so I just looked it up online what what the fish looks like, and uh, you know I just basically went to Google and found a whole bunch of pictures. Uh, this one seems pretty good and it looks like basically it's got a uh, you know dark like any any shad like a dark gray maybe even blue upper part and then it's got like this green stripe and some white underbody okay and then it's got a few spots any shad has usually a few spots on it um, the shads I'm used to seeing have a big big spot right here but uh, that's pretty much the fish um, most of the the images look like that I mean you know as you go as you go down so basically I just looked it up on on Google here's another really good one kinda of the same thing excuse the lighting here there's really kinda um, a yellow light so this isn't coming off very green but this is a green stripe dark upper body and a white underbody. Let's go ahead and get started. So for the hook, I'm using the uh, same as last time, Gamagatsu, uh, I think it's a uh, SS15, I wanna say. And for thread, I'm just using a 70 denier um, white thread. Uh, don't need to go real heavy with this. It's kind of different than my normal ties. Usually I, I've kind of got these well edited, but um, today I'm just, this is nighttime. Got my light on, usually it's in the day. A little better uh, white balance, but which is what I have to do right now. I don't really have a lot of time to be able to set up properly and all that, so. All right, so once we get our thread started, um, we're gonna go ahead and use some, I have hard as nails, but any kind of head cement here will work. Um, oops, got a little on the thread, that's okay. I'll just kind of wind that, that in. Alright, so the head cement is to keep everything from, from spinning. And we're just going to take uh, three, maybe four strands of this uh, pearl web from Fly Tires Dungeon. I have three strands here, so basically what I did is I folded them in half and then cut them in half. Alright. And we're going to go ahead and tie it right on top of the hook. Towards the back here. All right. You're going to have a bunch of them fray out here. That's all right. Most of the other fibers will go ahead and take care of that. All right. And then we're going to take bullfrog dubbing and light olive. And it's kind of almost like a not so bright chartreuse in a way. It's a good color. I like it. As last time, basically I take a hunk and I just separate it. So what it does is makes all the fibers stand straight out um, the same direction and it kind of uh, blends it. And then I'm going to take a Starburst dubbing in PMD olive, which is pretty darn close to that. Um, just to give it a little flash. I like a lot of flash in my my dubbings, or in my uh, flies. So, we'll go ahead and just mix that in, like so. Okay, you're gonna get a little bit of extra here. That's okay. You just basically pull out the extra. There we go. Tie that right on top. There we go. I'm going to take white of the bullfrog. Okay. That doesn't have a label on it, but trust me, it's the white bullfrog. I'm going to take about the same amount, a little less actually.
Oh, I got my kid calling me. One second. Alrighty. Sorry about that. My kid, uh, is, uh, woken up. Alright, so, take a small little hank like that and just do the same thing, separate it. All these you're going to do the same. You're going to separate like that. And then I'm going to take some Pearl Starburst. Move these out of my way. Set that down and grab some Pearl. Put that in for some flash. And just go ahead and mix that in. Make sure everything's facing the right direction. Pull out the extra. These flies get messy, and they really do. They're kind of messy flies to tie, but they sure do work. So once we got that, um, make sure I'm not in the camera there. We're going to go ahead and tie it like before, just right on the side, this time the white, okay? It's right on the side of the olive. And then on the other side. So, there we go. So now we've got green up above and white below, okay? I'm going to take more of the light olive color. You don't need a lot. A little more than that. Okay. And then we're going to do a little separating here. So a little bit, and then we're going to cut this in half. I find that dubbing actually using the bullfrog dubbing as dubbing it's just a little long fiber so I find it dubs on better if I cut that in half okay wet your fingers just to make it easy separate that on there like so and then just go ahead and twist dubbing right on. Once you do that, I want to grab some kind of like brush. Toothbrush can work. I have this uh, specialized brush for dubbing. You're just going to brush this up rough it up, kind of get it um, basically brushed up in a way. And then pull that back, like so. And then for the next, we're using, this is all going to be Bullfrog and Star Bus, or Star Burst. Um, so we're using, uh, I don't even know the name of this color, but it's like a light gray. Um, they've got a f like five different gray co colors, I believe, there. And uh, this one I think is the lightest of them all, but it's kind of got like almost a bluish tint to it. Uh, they don't have any blue color of um, their bullfrog or even starburst, which... That's fine. Um, this kind of works in the same way for this fly. I was hoping that they would come out with some kind of blue. I even asked them about it once and uh, said he'd look into it, but that was a couple months ago. But uh, hasn't yet. So now we're just mixing in some uh, of this holographic silver. It's really pretty, super flashy. Um, I'm just mixing that in with this uh, light gray, whatever. I 
forgot the name of it. Just I don't have it uh, labeled. Um, but okay, we're gonna leave that the length that it is. We're just gonna tie that right on top. So, and then we're going to take the white again, do the same, mix it, separate it, put it together, go in the same direction, all the fibers. Put in a little uh, of the pearl starburst for some flash. We're going to also leave this one the same length. sure that's on both sides pretty well and it is before we tie it in. Alright so then we bring one side back before, build sort of a dam on the front of it to keep all the fibers angled rearward. And then pull everything back, make sure it's even on both sides. Okay. And then we're going to take and this time, last time I used a little too much of this, so we're going to actually use a little less of this uh, really dark gray. Again, I'm not sure the name of the color, but it's a super dark gray. And uh, do the same, separate it. take some uh, black starburst dubbing and mix that in. Now the starburst dubbing is a little longer so we'll just go ahead and trim some of the ends here. Just kind of make everything the same. And we will tie that right on top. I find it's pretty, a lot easier just to do like a pinch um, tie in with this because it is super fine and it, it wants to turn. So that's on top and then we're going to grab a little more of this white. Now we don't want a lot. You got to remember that this stuff is a dry fly dubbing. And so, if you have too much of it on the bottom, the fly is going to end up turning upside down. Okay, so keep that in mind, how much you actually put on the bottom. This time we're doing very little. Let's see, a lot less than most others. Um, it's because we've got a fair amount already. So, mix that in with some of the pearl. And then we are going to cut this in half. We don't need a lot, a lot of length for this front part. So we cut in half, place the square ends opposite of each other, mix it in a bit more. Got the 
very little, as you can see. Didn't end up with a lot. But that's okay, and that's good. Just basically making a belly on this. Alright, so... Make sure these colors are separated. And, uh, you know, trying to, uh, what's important with this fly is noticing where you're at on the fly. As you can see, we're right up at the, the end here, and that's where we're ending. You don't want to, want to make sure you have hook shank management, basically, with this. Okay? Let me just form a dam to hold those fibers back, and then we can whip finish. Now, as I said before, probably the most important part of this, the most important step, is going to be um, combing through this. I use a, a bodkin for that. What this does is it, it um, kind of blends all the colors together, pulls everything out, and you'll see when I pull this back, I'm getting a lot of fiber coming out of this. It also thins it out, um, pulls out the extra stuff so when you start fishing this, this is not going to just start shedding on you on the water. Um, but the main reason I do this is, uh, is just to blend those colors together get it look nice and uh, natural. Okay. Look at all sides, make sure that it's the shape that you want, the colors are together as you want. Alright, so there we go. The next step is going to be um, adding on the eyes. Okay, so I don't have, uh, I'm not going to use some really got these eyes and the reason why I'm not going super big is because those fish, the profile, I don't want this front part to be uh, super super big and fat like the, the perch one. The perch's heads are a little bigger. This, their, their, their back body is, is actually a little fatter so I want to keep that front part a little thinner so I'm using a smaller eye. Um, a larger eye will make that larger Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and put on some of this uh, Fletch Tight. I like this for adding eyes. You can use the, the goo, the Zappa Goop or whatever it is. Um, also, um, just this is what I have on hand. Uh, my Zappa Goop that I had a while back dried out. This never did, so I just use what I have. And this seems to work really well. Okay. So let's uh, add it on the other side. Make sure those are relatively even. Okay, push those in, nice and tight, alright, now for the final step. So instead of messing up your really good bod bodkin, um, I have two of them, okay, so I have one that I use for, you can see how kind of gooped up this is, um, for applications just like so. Um, Really quick before we do, and you can see I've got an errant fiber there. Let's try to clean it up a bit. I've got some coming out this way. Let's uh, pull this back. 
and trim. Make everything kind of come out nice and even. See a whole bunch sticking out this way. There we go. Then I'm going to add this uh, Solares Flex formula like the last time. And we're just going to, you don't have to be precise with this, just get enough on there. Okay. your little bodkin tool and pull everything back. And you can kind of shape it. Like I said before, you want the top part to be kind of fatter, okay? You know what step I forgot? <laughs> forgot to add uh, the marks. But, alright, so there we go. We've got that. Let's uh, see, I forgot to add the marks last time too. Let's just zap it really quick with our UV light. There we go. Now you can see it's it moves, it flexes but uh, returns back to the shape, okay? So I'm gonna quickly see if I can actually get it on there real quick. This might actually be blessing in disguise. Yeah, see, I can write actually a little better on that. So let's go ahead and add our marks. There we go. Instead of waiting, you know, doing it first, let's, uh, you're gonna wanna add that UV resin I'll do four. I don't think it really matters. A lot of them are, uh, I've seen some with one, I've seen some with two on online. I looked it up, did a little research on these American Shabs, and got all different amounts of the dots. But, there we go. Let's make sure we've got this nice and shaped before we do the final step. Got kind of a little puffiness going right here. That's okay. Now, like last time, I like doing this. Again, it's not necessary, but adding one more little coat. What this does is um, really make sure that the eyes are on there. And it also kind of gives it a nice little finished look in a way. Okay. Put some around your whip finish. go. So, we've got, just like last time, return shape, same thing on the bottom. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let's uh, bring this up. 
Yeah, a little better. So. Same thing as the last fly, but you've got nice uh, silver, white underbelly, silver top with a dark back, and then this green stripe right in the center. And that's that's pretty much what those American Shads are, at least uh, from my what I'm seeing. Um, but there you go. So um, yeah, just like uh, Bass Knuckles Kid, I believe is uh, his uh, screen name. Uh, had asked for a, um, see I've got some errant fibers here and you can always trim this up to how you want. Okay, but, um, so just like he had asked for a, uh, a fly in a certain pattern, um, you know, please do that, you know, I'm, I'm very, uh, open to trying, uh, new things and, uh, trying something, you know, for you guys that you might, you know, want to see done. Um, so, send me messages and, uh, you know, let me know what you want, and I will do my best to try to imitate it. Will I be accurate every time? Maybe not. I don't know. Um, I don't necessarily call myself a professional, but it is something that I like doing. And, um, actually, I definitely don't call myself a professional. I am not. Um, I just really enjoy making these, uh... Uh, flies and I enjoy making uh, videos so um, it's fun for me. Send me messages uh, please subscribe if you haven't already I do a lot of fly tying um, I just started a new series of fly fishing um, right now I'm living uh, in an area that is mostly trout fishing um, but I am from a background of salt water um, also did a lot of bass fishing um, both uh, fly fishing and, and uh, conventional on everything so um, but uh, please join and uh, check out my videos. I'll see you on the next video.